So the next reaction on our list is acid catalyzed hydration. We'll find out we've actually got three different ways to do a hydration reaction. We're adding H and OH, essentially water across the alkene. That's why they call this a hydration reaction. And in the acid catalyzed hydration, we typically uh, add a strong acid H2SO4 with water. H2SO4 is by far the most common strong acid we use here. And you should know that when you add H2SO4 in water, it dissociates completely to form H3O+. So technically, if you just see simply H3O+, written over the arrow, you should treat it as the same way. You might see it that way as well, and that's why I kind of highlighted that here uh, on the table. Uh, in this case, the way this reaction happens, uh, as we said, stated earlier here, in the first step, your alkene pi bond is going to act as a nucleophile, and in this case, those hydrogens are partially positive. So, and we're going to react with one of those. Uh, H can only have one bond, so the old one has to break. Now, a lot of students will ask me, Chad, that oxygen's positive. Why didn't we attack the oxygen? Well, oxygen normally has two bonds. This oxygen has three. His problem is that he already has too many bonds, so if you attach another bond to him by attacking him here, that's not going to help him. But by attacking the hydrogen, he gets these electrons back right here and is no longer going to be positive. So this actually does help him. So if we look here, we're going to add that H to the less substituted side. We see this is a Markovnikov addition. This also goes through a carbocation intermediate. So we're adding to that, that H to the less substituted side to get that more substituted, more stable carbocation intermediate. And we're also going to form a water molecule. So and in this case, if we look at our species now, one we've got a carbocation, same one we had earlier, it's not going to rearrange again. Uh, but if I said, if there's anybody who's particularly electron rich or particularly electron poor, well, you might recognize that the carbocation is electron poor, so he is our electrophile, and that leaves water here to be the nucleophile. Now, water's not a great nucleophile, but he does have lone pairs of electrons, so he'll, he can function as one, but it turns out he's not very strong. He doesn't have a negative charge or anything like that, uh, but we'll take advantage of now identifying our nucleophile and electrophile to have nucleophile always attack electrophile in our nucleophilic attaps, attack steps. So in this case, we're going to end up with our water now attached to what used to be a carbocation. And good, we got two steps complete. We should note we are not done. If you look at your, what's termed actually an intermediate, this is not your product at this point, actually it's just an intermediate along the way to our product. You see an oxygen with three bonds and a plus charge, just like H3O plus over here. This thing is a strong acid, and you are never gonna finish off a reaction with an oxygen with three bonds and a plus charge. Whatever your solvent is, draw in another one and always have it deprotonate. So our solvent in this case is water, and we're gonna have water come and deprotonate this. So we'll finish it off with a proton transfer reaction. Hydrogen can only have one bond, so the old one has to break. And our final result here, our final product is actually just an alcohol, and we'll reform some H3O plus. So our true catalyst, H3O plus was reacted in the first step, regenerated in the final step, a true catalyst. One thing to note, no reason to talk about it here, but there's no stereospecificity here. If we look at the two new sp3 hybridized carbons we formed, uh, neither one is a chiral center, so we don't have to worry about uh, how to draw our products. We just get this single achiral organic product.